Hello and welcome to another edition of Simply Fit. I'm your host, your number one health and nutritional host, Sandy White. And we have a wonderful treat for you guys today. But before we get into interviewing our wonderful guests, I do want to thank WYTV7 Christian Broadcasters Network for allowing Simply Fit to be on the on their platform for a second season. Our mission is to encourage individuals to live a Simply Fit life through health and nutrition so that they're able to overcome suicide and depression. And this is one of the reasons why we have that we um, partnered up with the guests that we have coming on because they do bring in different parts of the puzzle to help you guys understand that being fit is more than just exercise. And with that being said, I want to introduce our guest. He is an ex NFL football kicker and he used to work for the Detroit Lions, the Indianapolis Coats, the New York Jets, but he suffered a career ending. Uh, a setback due to uh, overwhelming injuries and that was due to overtraining and he began practicing one of the things that I have told you guys about yoga of all things can you believe that guys and through his rehabilitation he was able to embrace the yoga mindset the meditation and the philosophy and he was able to basically reinvent his life. He does work with his wife and they have a, a successful running yoga practice. And so what we want to do is welcome Sean Conley to the show because he's going to be talking about his new book, The Point After, How One Resilient Kicker Learned Where There Was More to Life Than Just the NFL. Welcome to the show, Sean. Thanks, Sandy. I'm very excited to be here. Thanks for having Thank me. Thank you. So let's just get right into it. And I read the book, guys. This is the book. We're going to have the link up for you guys. It's really good. It's a. I thought it was an easy read, and it took me about six days, but I did stay up long hours because <laughs> it was really good. I love it. So I want to know um, really because because having a high profile position like that and then having your career um i looked at it as snuffed out but you may not use that term um because that's what you were really thinking i'm going to have a long-term career in the nfl how did that affect you and was that part of the reason you wrote this book y yes absolutely i i think you know, a, a lot of athletes have, have a similar story to me. Um, you know, a lot of times when you hear stories about uh, professional athletes, football players, it's, it's more like your Tom Brady's where they have this very long career and, and it just, you know, they, they, everything seems to be working out perfectly. Um, my career was more typical because the, the average NFL player lasts somewhere between two and three seasons. And that's where I was. I, I played for three different teams over three years. And I started um, playing sports very young, especially football um, from the age of eight. And so from age eight um, on and into high school and college, I was, I was obsessed with making the NFL. And for me, that was, that was, you know, that was, that was making it, you know, that was, you know, even like, um, you know, for me, like, you know, that was like being a man, like, and all that stuff. So I, it, 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 I tied my self-esteem to it, my identity. And so when I, when I made the NFL, or at least I thought I made the NFL and I signed with these teams, when it ended, and unfortunately it ended uh, uh, because of, uh, of, of multiple injuries, I wasn't able to go out on my, on, on my own terms, you could say. So that was, to answer your question, that was very difficult. So for me, you know, for 20, almost 20 years of my life, thinking this is who I am and I'm gonna be an NFL football player, then I am and I got it and then it's gone. It was, it was a very difficult time period for me um, because I, I, that's, that's all I thought I could, I could be. It. And if I wasn't that, I was a failure. So I spent um, many months, um, you, know, um, you know, maybe a year or two just stuck in this, in this, 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 this hamster wheel of, of regret and thinking how I could have, maybe there could have been things I, I would, should have done differently. And, you know, it's, it, you know, my, my life is not working out as planned. So now what? And so that was, that was a hard time for me to, to eventually move on. You know, I, I was able to move on, of course, but, um, you know, just like a lot of athletes, there's just that feeling of like, you know, 
now what? Right. So out of that, what what did you actually learn from the failures and the fear? Because you because that that's I mean, even if you're not in a high profile position, you you know, you could whatever position you're in and you lose it suddenly. I mean, that's stress, that's strain. You, you've got responsibilities and don't add in children and a spouse. This is like, oh my God, your head is like, what in the world? But what did you learn from that? I mean, cause you're not a failure, you, you bounce back. But in that process, I know you, you weren't thinking like that. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And, and I think interestingly enough that the, the more times I failed, the more I realized that you know, the, the, like, like, like it, it, we don't always control everything. And like, I, it's, it's okay to fail. We can learn that the first time I was cut by an NFL football team, um, it, 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 it was crushing, but then the next time it was, it was less crushing. And then, and then the third time it was less crushing. But then when I was like out, out of the game and I had no football to look forward to, that's when it started to accumulate. But I think what I, what I began to learn is that, that, you know, life isn't this, you know, perfect beginning, middle and end. And I think before that, that's how I thought it w- was like that, that I could control, you know, what I was doing next, because I, up within that time, things were working out the way I wanted to. Maybe I, I had to work obsessively for it and I had to overtrain to get what I wanted. But then I started to realize that like, there's, there's, you know, there's, there's going to be times where we're going to be throwing these, these curveballs, and it's okay what's important is to not obsessively spend time, um, you know, looking at like our failures or how things didn't go right, not realizing that there's other opportunities for us, but we just need to move on. I love that quote, um, you know, where we stare at a, at a, at a door that's closed, not realizing that there's a door that's open out there for us. And, and that, that was probably the biggest lesson for me. Like, okay, things didn't work out the way you wanted to, no big deal. There's something else out there where you can help people or, you know, that, 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 that there's, there's, there's something that can be that, that you can do positive out there with your life. I agree. You know, well, one of the um, things that you mentioned in your book, and I think it ties into this, you see that door has closed, but because some of the players haven't prepared themselves, they don't look at I don't need to worry about it. By the time that door closed, I'll be retired. They don't look at it. And one of the things you said, um, this is this is one of the reasons why players don't report their injuries. But what, what I want you to share with folks outside of that, because this, this is a revelation you and I are bringing out, but you have a more intel insight. Is that one of the reasons why they don't share that they're injured? Or is it more to just, I assumed I'm going to be in the NFL, so I retire. Yeah, I think there's a couple things to that. Yeah, the, the, the one the one thing why 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 players conceal injuries is because you know if they tell the coach that they have an, have an injury, next thing you know it, they're sitting on the bench and they may not get their starting position back out there. But I think it's also the mentality that if you have pain, so what? You have to play through that pain. Um, you know, when I was playing and I, you know, I was a kicker, so I wasn't, I wasn't getting hit physically, but my position required repetitive movement over and over again. So I had a lot of pain. So instead of resting when I should have, what I would do is I would just walk into the the, the training room and say, Hey, can I get some more, um, you know, those big giant ibuprofen pills, like the 800 milligram, can I get some more pain pills? Can I get some more muscle relaxants, relaxants? I just want to do everything I could to mask the pain because the last thing that I want to do was go tell the coach that I needed to rest um, because I, I didn't want to take that risk of, of losing my job. You know, that is extremely stressful. You have to work so hard to get the position and then you finally get it. And then you have to work. It sounds like equally as hard to keep it because they're looking at the next best whatever for your spot, you know, that's just insane. And I don't see how anybody can like properly function without having some type of outlet. And I guess um, not the fact that, you know, you transition out, but the fact that now you can share with folks a positive way, you know, to um, release that pressure. Cause I, I, I just, I love your book. So why don't you get into sharing with folks how you transition into um, writing a book and you know working with your wife and doing yoga and then we'll go into some more questions 
Yeah, for sure. My, my transition was, it, it wasn't just like football right into yoga. Um, when I was playing football near the end of my career, um, when I was with the Colts and the Jets, so this was 94, 95, my wife was, was already into yoga. I guess you could say she was like a pioneer in the yoga industry. And she was like, Hey, why don't you try yoga? Because these, these pills aren't working. They're giving, they're masking the pain, but they're not actually helping uh, to, for, for you to heal your back. So I didn't listen to her. I kept kicking, kept doing my conventional training, pushing, weightlifting, uh, pain pills. But once my career ended, it was for sure over. I couldn't get anyone to like bring me in for a tryout. My back was in such bad shape. My back, my hips. Uh, if I'd go for a walk, um, I would feel the pain. I couldn't just stand somewhere. I had to like sit if we just, you know, went to like a concert or a bar or anything like that. So it got to a point where I figured like I had nothing to lose because I'm 25 now, but my body feels like it's 85. So I started doing her yoga classes and within a, just a few months, my back started feeling like it was 18 again. You know, my, my hips felt great. My legs felt great. And, but what was unusual or what's really surprised me about that, because, you know, it wasn't that surprising that it would work because she's been telling me that would work. But the biggest surprise was how it helped, helped me mentally and, and spiritually, because up until that point, I never took time to rest. I was always like a pusher, a driver, and I never took time to just you know, like, you know, breathe, be in the present moment. And that's, that's what I learned in yoga. And that's what I was most resistant to too. Cause my wife would say during the yoga classes, breathe, breathe in and out of your nose. But to me, that didn't make any sense because there was nothing um, aggressive about that. There was nothing violent about that. There was nothing physical or, or athletic about the breathing. But after a while I, I relented and I started to breathe. And that's when I started to have these moments um, practicing yoga where I was able to have like some clarity on like what happened in my football career. So instead of looking back at my career with regret, it was more with gratitude, like, Hey, you were lucky to, to do what you did. And so I had all these different subtle shifts, um, mentally, emotionally, spiritually, that I realized, wow, this yoga could help me move beyond, um, you know, something like what I thought was a, a failure. And it wasn't really the yoga doing this. This was just me. You know, yoga was the environment. But the but me just taking time to focus on my breathing, be more in the moment, uh, allowed me to have these breakthroughs, I guess you could say. And that and then when that happened, I realized, wow, this is something really, really special. So I started to practice more and more. And then when my wife op opened up her yoga studio, she said, "Hey, you have to teach too, because we, we there's only me. I need another teacher." <laughs> so that's and I thought this is this is great. This is my chance to now give back and help others with their injuries you know, what they're going through beyond, beyond their physical, maybe, you know, with, 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 you know, some things in their life as well. So that's, that's why, that's what brought me to, to where I am now. Awesome. Uh, guys, we're going to take a commercial break and then we're going to talk to Sean about some more uh, uh, in reference to his book and, and who can actually benefit from uh, yoga. All right, guys, see you in a few minutes. Happy Living here. I love good things made by good people. That's why I love my relaxed sauna. I bask in its healing far infrared rays every morning. In just 20 minutes, I sweat as much as if I'd run four miles. But I'm not exhausted. Instead, I feel great. And I've boosted my metabolism, burned calories, sweated away toxins, and some body fat too. What a relaxing and healthy way to start a day. A study in Finland found people who regularly use saunas live longer and have fewer fatal heart problems. So get the benefits of a sauna in your home for your family too. It's surprisingly affordable, it's portable, and it fits nearly anywhere. Go to happyliving.com and select Partners in Happy to get a hundred bucks off any purchase of a thousand dollars or more. And I'll donate another hundred dollars for every order placed during the entire month of December to WYTV7. So here's my idea for you. Get a relaxed sauna for yourself this holiday season and give another as a gift. All right, 
right, guys, we're back, and I hope you enjoyed our commercial break with Relax Sauna. You guys need to get one. It's really, really good. So now, guys, we're back, and when we left for our commercial break, we were talking with Sean um, to talk to us a little bit more about his book and who can take advantage of um, what he's talking about in, in the book, and then who yoga can really benefit Oh, pick, pick it up from there? Yes, Sean. Yeah, so, so awesome, awesome. Yeah, so who can really benefit? I, you know, that was one of the reasons why I wrote the book because I was someone who was probably one of the, you know, very unusual person to, to take up yoga. So when I first got into yoga, um, um, you know, guys weren't doing yoga and cer certainly athletes weren't doing yoga. And so that's why I shared my story instead of just like telling people, hey, do yoga, do yoga. I thought if I can, you know, share my story of all the, the ups and downs through sports and, and my resistance to yoga, which was, which went over for years. I, I spent years wasting time resisting it. Um, and, 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 and what I discovered by practicing, hopefully that would inspire some people to, um, to take up yoga themselves, because I think it can benefit all of us, but just in different ways based on like what's going on in, in, in our life. But I think yoga, um, in terms of who it can help is luckily now, you know, it wasn't like this, you know, 20, 25, 30 years ago, yoga was pretty rigid and it was about like trying to get deeper into the pose and stuff like that. And so out of that grew all of these myths, like, okay, I had a certain body type. I had to look a certain way to do yoga wear certain clothes and all that stuff. And I had to be like super flexible. Um, but now because it, it's grown so much here, um, that there's so many different styles. And so you can do hot and hard, sweaty yoga to just like, a more gentle form of yoga. Um, the trick is, is to find um, a teacher in a class that works for you. So what I always recommend for anyone who's interested in yoga is to just commit to yourself. I'm going to, I'm going to spend the next one, two, three months trying out different studios, maybe different online classes and just keep exploring, being open to it. And then eventually you know, that's how we find what works because it, it can, there can be quite a big difference in the, in the types but then once we find that, then, okay, now we have something that we can do for, for the rest of our lives. That's, that's one of the beautiful things about yoga. We can, it doesn't beat up our bodies. It's, it's practice in, in moderation. So you can, you can do it over and over and over again for, for decades. And now I, and I, I do have a, a, a kind of, well, let me just ask. So in your book, you said that when you started doing the yoga, it allowed you to be happy pretty much like for no reason, just in the moment. And also you said it helped with uh, ADD. Mm -hmm. So do you guys work with children or just adults that may be having this challenge? Because a lot of times, as you mentioned, people are happy if they get a new car or they get a new job. They just don't know how to just be happy to be happy. So which class, um, I know, you could probably attain that in any of the yoga classes, but which is, what's the ones that you guys teach right now that um, they can start off with that can yeah. move them into that, that space? Yeah, absolutely. We, we just teach open classes. We call them, we just call them all levels. So in, in our, in a typical class, we could have people as young as, as 15, 16, and as old as in, in their seventies. Um, how we teach is we, we give options for each pose. So, you know, if you're someone with an injury or new to yoga, you can do it this way. If you've been practicing for a while, you can do it this way. That's always been a big, um, I guess, uh, driver in how we, we, we've operated our classes is, is to make the place, make everyone feel comfortable where they can do what works, works for their body. And so that they, because Quite often, you know, when we, we do something new, I know for myself, I, I immediately turn into a comp into a competition. Like I start to golf, and I want to get really good at it. I don't golf anymore, but when I did, I, I would get super competitive with it. But that that happens a lot in yoga. So when we first come into like someone comes into a yoga class, usually their first reaction of how they'll 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 approach it is they'll start to look around the room and compare themselves to other people when they're when they're maybe not doing. Um, their knees not bent much. They'll be like, oh, my, my knees not bent much. I should try to do more. And so that's a typical, like if you talk to students or just kind of observe, that's usually how we do. But that's, that's like the opposite of yoga. 
you know, is, is trying to like make our bodies look a certain way or stretch a certain level. But what's nice about that is maybe that's what we first discover when we do yoga, that we go to yoga and like, wow, I'm, I'm competing in yoga. That's, that's not a really healthy thing. Maybe I need to work on in my life being less compared, you know, competitive in there, or maybe, um, you know, for me, it was having a, a, a stronger relationship with my body that instead of was, that was like violent and destructive. Cause when my career ended, I was, I was very, very, I guess you could say upset with my body. Like, why did you fail me at age 25? Like, why, can, why can my body not do this anymore? And so that I, that yoga really helped me with that. Instead of like looking at my body as something that failed, I, I looked at it as like, Hey, you're, you're lucky to be able to, to move your legs and to move your arms and, you know, just, you know, to go for a walk, but it took me a while to get there. But, you know, yoga really helped me do that where I now look at my body differently. I could, I don't really care about doing push-ups and all that, you know, physical stuff. Now I like to do yoga and just move and breathe and, and feel grateful that I'm able to do that. I, I have another question for you, um, piggybacking off of what you're saying, being able to be, to be able to be uh, moved, which is very, very grateful. I, it's, and the NFL is a very strenuous sport. I mean, you guys are banging, colliding. And then when they stop, they, it's almost like they, when we, we see them on the field, they're nice and young looking. And then when they're done, they just look like they age like 75 years automatically. I mean, and one of the things or something. Yeah. 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 And it's insane. But are you working with some of the players? Cause that's one of the things you, you mentioned, you feel you're, you're at a certain age, but you feel 50 years older and you have to, you know, take care of your body internal and externally. Are you working with some of the players now so that they're, cause some of them can't move and it's sad. Right. No, you're, you're absolutely right. Like it, it's, you know, even someone who plays, you know, college football. And so they, they leave college at age 22. You know, if you run into them in their thirties, they're going to, they're going to tell you they've had both their knees replaced or, or their hips replaced, or they, or they walk, they walk crooked. And it's, it's, it's really sad. Um, we, we work with, um, well, we worked with the Steelers um, a handful of years ago, but um, we work more with high school and college because they're just more open to it right now it's 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 it's, they're they're easier to get into the studio they're easier to go to their 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 locations a lot of our teachers as well do that and what we try to teach them is hey this isn't just for your sport right now this isn't just to help give you an edge and that's always the first thing that they will um grab onto because they want to be able to compete uh stronger they want to have a mental edge so we teach that and then they they eat that up they love that part but then what we also remind them is hey whatever you do, because we may not see you in a year or two, you're going to graduate, you're going to go on, but try to keep practicing yoga and moving your body and not just doing the same repetitive pushing and pressing and, and all that, because you, when you're over, you want to be able to do basic movements. And, and when you tell these to like 20 year olds, they'll look at you like you're crazy, but I'll say like, when you're in your fifties and sixties, you want to be able to get down on the floor and crawl with your grandchildren. And that sounds crazy to you, but like for some people, that's, that's, that's everything. That, that, that you want at that age. So we remind them like, hey, like just moving your body is so, so important. I agree. So guys, I could talk to Sean and you know, I talk a lot for another hour or so, but we're down to the end of our segment. So we wanna give Sean the opportunity to share with y'all some key messages from his book, how you can get in contact with him, where his studios are and where you can get a copy of his book. Take it away, Sean. Oh, well done. Yeah, I would, I would say uh, some of the main key messages is just, you know, you know, to, to not define ourselves like who we think you are. So if this is my job, I'm this. If it, this is what I do, I'm that. And just being always open to, um, you know, possibilities beyond what we're doing right now. And, and knowing that there's going to be, if there's not a wave coming to hit us right now, like, like there will be, and we may have to shift and, and, and that's okay just to be in, being open to that and, you know, finding some sort of practice, whether it's yoga, meditation, or just taking a walk every day in the woods where, 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 where you could have some headspace to help us not, you know, stay stuck in the past or, or, or trying to think about this perfect future. But when we do stuff like yoga, meditation, hiking, that allows us, um, you know, just watching a sunset, those, those type of activities help us just have some space and, 
you know, sometimes we get caught up in, in, in that, in that, in that hamster wheel. Um, oh yeah. And thanks for asking about, um, where they can find the book. So seanconley.net is my website and on there are all these different links for the, for the book. And there's also some great resources for yoga and meditation as, as, as well. Thank you. So where are your studios? Are they just in Philadelphia or do you guys have, uh, have you trained other teachers and you're, you know, in several other states? Where can uh, they find you guys? Because you do online too, right? Yep, yep, yep. We're, we're in Pittsburgh. And um, so we, we do trainings, you know, before the pandemic, we would do trainings like in different places. But right now, and we, we do in Pittsburgh, of course, now we just do all of our stuff online until we're able to, we're hundred percent virtual right now until probably next year. But uh, yeah, Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Cool. And tell them your website. Oh, yes. Uh, SeanConley.net. No, no, no. Is that just for the book or that's for the book oh, and the yoga oh, classes? Thank you. Yeah, for the, for the yoga classes, um, AmazingYoga.net. Cool. Guys, we've had a wonderful time talking to Sean. Make sure you pick up his book, The Point After. Make sure you check out his website. If you don't have uh, a really good yoga uh, studio that you can take classes online, check him out. And remember, we broadcast every Wednesday night at 7 p.m. And I want to remind you guys, I'm Sandy White, the host of Simply Fit Radio, your number one health and wellness cheerleader. Until next week, thank you guys. And thank you, Sean, for coming on. Bye. So much fun. Thank you.